Our hired man left to enlist just as corn planting commenced. So I shouldered my hoe and have worked out ever since. I guess my services are just as acceptable as his. No conflict in history, a journalist wrote, was so much a woman's war as the Civil War. North and South, women looked for ways to help. In the North, citizens formed the Sanitary Commission and the Christian Commission to organize private relief and check the spread of disease in the army. The disease rate was cut in half. Sanitary commissioners prowled the camps demanding they be cleaned up, reforming hospital conditions, insisting on better food, making sure blankets, shoes, medicines, and packages from home were distributed fairly. Prominent men ran the Sanitary Commission. New York lawyer George Templeton Strong was its treasurer. But hundreds of thousands of women in 7,000 local chapters all over the North did the work. Sewing, knitting, baking, wrapping bandages, raising funds, organizing rallies. If this war developed some of the most brutal, bestial, and devilish qualities lurking in the human race, it has also shown us how much of the angel there is in the best men and women. Mary Livermore. Mary Livermore, a Chicago minister's wife, organized Midwestern volunteers into 3,000 chapters. And when the army was threatened with scurvy, sent so much food south that one reporter said, a line of vegetables connected Chicago and Vicksburg. Clara Barton, who stood barely five feet tall, distributed supplies by mule train, ministered to the wounded from Cedar Mountain to Antietam and tirelessly lobbied Washington for better care for the men. In a letter home, Catherine Wormsley, a nurse on a hospital ship, decried the confusion and chaos on board. But she ended, goodbye, this is life. George Templeton Strong's wife, Ellie, went south to serve on a hospital ship too. Ellie's tact, sense, good nature, and energy conquered the USA surgeon in charge at once and coerced all his official dignity into hearty, grateful cooperation in the care of his cargo of 500 cases, mostly bad ones. I've never given her credit for tithe of the enterprise, pluck, discretion, and force of character she has shown. God bless her. We had no sanitary commission in the South. We were too poor. We had no line of rich and populous cities closely connected by rail. With us, every house was a hospital. Southern women worked as nurses too, despite criticism that it was unladylike for them to care for ruffians. Sally Tompkins of Richmond and a staff of only six nursed 1,333 wounded men in her private hospital and kept all but 73 of them alive, a record unmatched by any other Civil War hospital north or south. Mary Ann Bickerdyke, a Quaker widow and sanitary commission agent, traveled with the Union Army through four years and 19 battles, assisting at amputations, brewing barrels of coffee, rounding up cattle and chickens and eggs to feed the grateful men who called her Mother Bickerdyke. By the end of the war, General Sherman said simply, she ranks me. Every day since late May, U.S. Grant's 200 Union guns had pounded Vicksburg from land, while Admiral David Porter's gunboats battered it from the river. They fire at the city, thinking that they will wear out the women and children and sick, and General Pemberton will be obliged to surrender the place on that account. But they little know the spirit of the Vicksburg women and children. 
Civilians dug caves in the yellow clay hillside, some with several rooms fitted out with rugs, beds and chairs, and staffed with slaves. But food ran low. The city's defenders were reduced to eating mules, horses, and dogs. The Vicksburg Gazette had to be printed on the back of flowered wallpaper. There was no more newsprint. We are utterly cut off from the world, surrounded by a circle of fire. The shower of shells goes on day and night. People do nothing but eat what they can get, sleep when they can, and dodge the shells. Dora Miller. It was living like plant roots, one woman said. Union troops began calling Vicksburg Prairie Dog Town. Finally, after 48 days of siege on July 4th, the same day that Lee began his retreat from Gettysburg, 31,000 Confederates surrendered. Confederate General John C. Pemberton said it would be an act of cruel inhumanity to subject his men to the terrible ordeal any longer. Besides, he added, I am a northern man. I know my people. I know we can get better terms from them on the 4th of July than on any other day of the year. The Stars and Stripes was raised above the Vicksburg Courthouse. At the celebration aboard Admiral Porter's flagship on the Mississippi, Grant was the only one who did not touch the wine offered him, but contented himself with a cigar. Grant is now deservedly the hero, belabored with praise by those who accused him a month ago of all the sins in the calendar, and who next week will turn against him if so blows the popular breeze. Vox Populi, Vox Humbug. William Tecumseh Sherman. It is now conceded that all idea of British intervention is at an end. I want to hug the Army of the Potomac for Gettysburg. I want to get the whole Army of Vicksburg drunk at my own expense. I want to fight some small man and lick him. Henry Adams. The Confederacy was cut in two. The Mississippi had become a Union highway. The father of waters, Lincoln said, again goes unvexed to the sea. We have lost the Mississippi, and our nation is divided, and there's not enough left to fight for. The 4th of July would not be celebrated in Vicksburg again for 81 years. <laughs> 